when is it good to be congruent and when is it time not to be congruent? Stay tuned. Damon here with NLP Gym. NLP congruency, the benefits and also the dangers. If you haven't already, please click subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis. So let's talk about what congruency is in the first place as when we mean it in NLP. So in a, congruence you can think of as something that is more about a, a specific experience and a specific place and state. And in that sense, congruence is having your, to, your total attention and focus on one thing. So if I am um, enjoying um, just vac my vacation, it means my mind, my head, uh, I'm, my, my presence is in that vacation and only there and I'm very present to that experience or if I'm writing or if I'm in some sort of creative pursuit or even some sort of work um, that means all my attention is on that I'm not thinking about all the things I should be doing or could be doing um, there's no other noise or distraction my undivided attention is on that thing so that in one sense is being congruent another way of being congruent is um, my my actions and my behaviors are aligned with the way that I think, the way that I believe, the way that I speak, what I tell people about myself. And they're aligned with my values and I'm not inconsistent. I, I say what I do and I do what I say. That's a way of thinking of congruency. And when I'm coaching someone and I ask them a question, I look for congruency in what they're saying to what their body is telling me. So say we begin with a problem and at the end of it I might ask is the problem resolved? Do they still have some issues with it or are they whatever it is they want to be? And if I see any hesitation and they still say yes but they're hesitating, well that's incongruent. It's not their word, what they're saying isn't really matching up with their physiology. Basically, if it were a congruent yes, they wouldn't hesitate. Their body wouldn't shift or anything. It would be their body would say the same thing as what their words are saying. So I look for that when I'm coaching. Um, I look for that in sales. Uh, if somebody's hesitating or somebody's not, you can tell they're not quite feeling it, but they tell me the opposite. I know there's more work that needs to be done. So we want full commitment in something. You need to be congru congruent to do that. Uh, why, where is congruency not a good thing? Well, say you decide to embark on a business venture and about halfway through it you realize either it's not a good um, investment, it's not something you're enjoying, you know, something else comes up and this happens all the time. Well, to be congruent, that means you would stick with it. That means you would go down with the ship even though there's no point in doing that. You might as well stop doing what you're doing and go do something else. And this is where your values come in. Uh, are you aligned to those values? If we're congruent all the time, let's take the state thing for, you know, if we're talking about a, uh, an experience, if we're congruent to that experience and we're kind of stuck in that experience and we can't shift out of it when we need to. So if I'm on vacation and I'm very present to that vacation, but then some sort of emergency happens and I need to go do something else and change my mind, in that time I have to be incongruent for a little bit and step out of the vacation and step into the emergency. But if I was 100% congruent to the vacation, then as long as I'm on that vacation, I'm ignoring any outside emergencies, and that might not be a good thing. It may take you several tries and take you evolving into figuring out what it is you want to do instead of just sticking with it. And I see this all the time in young people. It's, it's something I dealt with, and I see a lot of people, young people dealing with it. They've been groomed from the time that they were a kid to believe that they were going to be a lawyer or a doctor or something like that. So they get into law school, they get into med school, and they realize they really don't like this, but they feel like they have to be congruent because this is what they were taught their whole life, that this is the right thing to do. This is, you know, my parents were doctors, or my parents were lawyers, or what have you. And so they stick with it, and sure, it's being congruent, but that's, you could spend years of your life doing something you don't want to do, and that is not where you want to find yourself. So congruency is good when it comes to focus. Congruency is good when it comes to follow through, when it's a worthwhile thing to follow through with. But if it's not really who you are and if it doesn't serve your values, being congruent 
can waste years of your life. And we all know that we don't want to do that. <laughs> we want to we want to get into something and and it takes commitment, it takes follow through to succeed at something. And it doesn't mean that just by being congruent it makes it easy. It's not necessary that's not necessarily true. Sometimes and it doesn't mean that you should quit just because something is hard. But are you enjoying it? Is it worthwhile? Is it paying off in some way? It, that should tell you whether or not you should follow through with it. Outside opinion, other people telling you what you should do and trying to stay congruent to that, that's going to get you into a lot more trouble. So listen to what's going on inside of you. And sometimes it's time to not be congruent and break out of something and go do something else. Check out our website, nlp-gym.com. Follow us on Facebook. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get these videos on a regular basis on Facebook. You can get updates on our trainings in real time. Also free practices that we hold. And remember, in one month, we have Core Transformation. This is likely to sell out. Uh, it will be taught by Mark Andreas here in Santa Cruz. Mark Andreas is the son uh, Steve and Connie Ray Andreas, some of the greatest developers and legends in NLP. You want to be at this workshop. It will teach you how to transform at the core level. For you coaches, this will also, this is something you can use in your coaching practice. You can, in fact, you can base a whole coaching practice just around this model. It's extremely powerful. So I hope to see you soon. Take care.